All right, so we'd like to introduce to you our project, Trump's Twitter ticks. For reference, ticks responds to the positive or negative change uh, within a financial security on the stock market. So the problem we looked to solve was how do Donald Trump's tweets impact the stock market? We picked this as we were both very interested in politics and economics, and we thought it was a cool project because if it ever worked, it could have some real tangible use in terms of guiding stock market uh, trading decisions. So our data set, primarily composed of Donald Trump's tweets since his inauguration in January of 2017. That was about 9,000 tweets uh, with a maximum length of 59. We got these from tw Trump's Twitter archive, a lovely website, uh, that we discovered once we realized Twitter APIs have a very low limit on the number of tweets that you can pull at a given time. We then cleaned these data, uh, tweets, uh, removing links, parsing the individual words, getting rid of hashtags and punctuation. We also augmented the data set to create a bigger data set, given that we only had 9,000 tweets to work with, uh, replacing synonyms uh, of high frequency words and re removing some of the words from the tweets. We then passed all of the tweets through the Glove uh, pre-trained model, which was based off of 2 billion existing tweets, which was a great tool that allowed us to not just use dictionary words, but also names and other things in pop culture. However, it was not entirely encompassing the words in the tweets, so we did some manually uh, removal process for some keywords and replacing it with uh, similar words, such as Kavanaugh with Judge and Pelosi with Speaker of the House. Uh, so we decided to shift gears a little bit in terms of which index we are using. The, we chose to use the S&P 500 because it is not a price-weighted index, as well as the fact that it better encapsulates the entire market as opposed to just uh, the top 30 companies in the world. Uh, we used the hourly change to calculate the second derivative after Trump's tweets. So we used the three hours after a Trump tweet and the change within those three hours, and then compared that to the three hours prior to the Trump tweet in order to automatically label all the tweets. We did, however, go through the tweet data set after that, manually label some of the tweets, and then remove outliers that we felt as if they were just labeled incorrectly or we were completely unsure of. So to solve this problem, we created a recurrent neural network uh, with three layers, including a gated recurrent unit and two linear layers, outputting the final result, which was a three-item tensor involving the positive, negative, and no change probability of a given tweet. Uh, therefore, we used the softmax activation output function, which is typical for multi-class classification problems, as well as that's what guided our decision to use cross-entropy loss function when improving our model. OK, so we managed to achieve a training accuracy of 74%, 59% for validation, and testing for 53%. This is not ideal. Um, some things to consider, and we would have had in the confusion matrix if we had some technical <laughs> difficulties, um, is the fact that our model was way more likely to predict no change than anything else. This is honestly probably ideal because what we ended up finding is that when our model made a prediction, whether positive or negative, it tended to be about 70% correct, and you would rather to be wrong in the sense that you're not going to make an investment versus making an incorrect investment. And I would like to discuss how our model failed. So take this tweet here from 2018. This tweet is fairly straightforward for the model. It discusses trade wars, which is generally bad for the economy. And our model was effectively able to pick that up on 84% stock market go down. But on the other hand, we have this tweet, which it was not included in the data set from five days ago from Donald Trump. It discusses the Apple building a new uh, factory in Austin. Everything looks positive about it, 5G technology. However, this Trump tweet was a lie. Apple built this factory in 2013. So our model turned around and predicted that the stock market was going to be positively affected with a 63% um, like confidence. However, what actually happened is, is we looked after this tweet, and in the three hours prior to this tweet, Apple stock was going up, and the three hours after this tweet, Apple stock actually fell significantly, reaching a three-week low. So, eh, yeah, it, it's, it, the, the point of this is how hard it is to properly capture the reception to a tweet, because you not only are looking for the sentiment and the words, is how people react to the tweet. So, in conclusion, we would actually use, do things slightly differently. We would actually curate the data set in a completely different way. We would probably not automate the date labeling. We would actually 
to a smaller subsection of tweets, actually knowing the effect of them corrected, cor corroborated from outside sources, and then used a lot more data augmentation sheets so we have a lot more confidence in our data set. We would also like to tackle a problem that we were 100% sure had correlation. It was very interesting. We, we, we found ourselves trying to build literally a lie detector in terms of Trump's tweets. Like, it is a very hard task, and it, we had a hard time when training the model to know whether, whether the correlation actually existed or perhaps it was a problem with the model. And then finally, just computing capacity. Our computer struggled with our initial model, and we actually had to scale down the size of our model, make it more efficient, that could have ended up with worse results. And Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just on the last point, so you, you didn't use Colab or Google Cloud or anything? You stuck with uh, your own computer? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we did, and, and not so much necessarily poor results, but it was interesting because it kind of guided our process to ensure it was an efficient model, just in terms of having yeah. everything run. Um, That's a good school of thought. Yeah. Yeah. You shouldn't just assume you have massive computing. You should yeah. be, be uh, Careful with the computing. Um, on that thing about the Apple example, yeah. what, were you implying that Apple is a big part of the S&P and therefore well, it was just and it, it was pushing it up and down? I saw it as kind of just like a specific example, like even though. But, but did you did not, you say that uh, the, the market the, the market you were tracking the S&P went the opposite way from what you? Well, Apple's the what I discussed was actually Apple's stock, but we were talk, kind of considering a similar Trump tweet might be with regards to the entire stock market as a whole, just downright lying about tariffs <laughs> or trade war or whatever. Like the that was just a specific example and the effect on Apple's stock. And that ordered sort yeah, of thing. It's it. Yeah, we forgot. <laughs> it's what, what is it? Negative, no change, positive. Negative, no change. Positive. Yeah. The middle one's no change. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think it's great that you switched over to predicting, predicting that. And that uh, yeah. second thing you said about when it did make a non, no change prediction. Yeah. Uh, it was seven. Uh, it so was so, so or seven. when it made the um, prediction, what positive or negative? Yeah. It was actually seventy percent correct. Yeah, that's a good thing but to report. Make sure yes. you do report that. But yeah. And, and sorry, one thing I want to say just broadly, I ended up saying that a lot in the progress reports. Yeah. Uh, make sure when you're presenting any percentage accuracy. That, you, that you're comparing, to, there's a very simple comparison. If it's a binary comparison, then a random computer, a random coin gets 50% accuracy. So anything relative to that, that you know, 54% uh, is not very good compared to 50%. But if you get 54% and you're, and you're selecting amongst three categories, then, then that's, uh, the random accuracy would be 33%. Yeah. That is significant. And I, I would urge everyone, whether or not you've got it in your presentation, to always reference that. Because if you don't, then you're not really facing what's, what, what the reality of predictions are. Yeah. So I just wanted that yeah. for you and for others. Yeah. So that 70% on a binary thing at that point is actually looking yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Mike, can you think with uh, yeah, I didn't see any mention of the distribution of the labels, uh, so that accuracy is really hard to judge. Uh, oh. If, oh. if you have 99% negative and 1% positive, I can just always guess negative and get 99% accuracy, so that number doesn't really um, mean that's much. That's true, too. Um, so prior to, the, uh, prior to the data augmentation, I remember these numbers, it was about 3,000 for positive, 2,800 for negative, and 3,700 for no change. I believe. Somewhat balanced. Yeah, so, so it's somewhat balanced, okay. but not completely balanced. Okay, okay. that's very important. The confusion yeah. matrix yeah. would have really cleared that yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do we have any comments, questions? Yeah. I wonder what other data augmentation Pardon me? What was the data augmentation that you did? Oh, so what we did is we, um, a lot of cinnamon, synonym replacement to increase the data set. So we'd use, instead of great, we'd use big. or And then also, Switching words within sentences and then just word deletion, and so yeah. you create a whole new tweet that would have yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And it, did you do well, anything with the word perfect? Perfect. <laughs> the, it, we found that three thousand times Trump has used the word great in tweets. <laughs> so we got three thousand <laughs> more tweets. <laughs> we got three thousand more tweets just from changing the word great. <laughs> Obviously, we made more changes from there, but yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.